My box just got here. So excited. So my box just got here, just got back from the mailbox, and I'm excited to see what's in it. So this is my second mystery box challenge. You guys know I'm all about those affordable home decor pieces, and sometimes you just gotta make them yourself. Uh, I am really grateful that Courtney has invited me back for the second time to be a part of the mystery box challenge. So normally I would wait until I had something really cute behind me to film this, but my box just got here and I am in the middle of creating a whole new workspace, a home office for myself to craft and work in. So excuse the white background. I am just so excited. I'm chomping at the bit. I'm so grateful to Courtney, who is creative on the cheap, who invited me to take part in my second mystery box challenge. So Courtney's been doing this for years. She puts it all together. She invites crafty DIY people to all send each other a box and then see what we come up with. So this time around, I received my box from Shannon, who is the daily DIYer who has not one, but two DIY channels. She has a whole Christmas channel. So if you love Christmas, be sure to check that out. I will have all those down below in the description. And this time around, I sent my box to Jamie, who is the crafty DIY guy. And I think I was pretty nice. This time around, the twist of the challenge is that our challenge items actually all come from the same person. Megan from Glue Guns and Roses sent us all our challenge items. So it's gonna be very interesting. This time around, we're gonna have to use our challenge items together in a DIY, and we all have the same items to work with, which will be very interesting to see what we all do with them. So even though I sent a box to Jamie and Shannon sent a box to me, we're all sending each other box items. We didn't send challenge items in those boxes and we were allowed to shop anywhere so let's get right into what shannon sent me so it just arrived i'm chomping at the bit i cannot wait to see what she sent me there is a card oh my goodness that's so shannon so cute with the gold in the middle hi val these are all items from my own personal diy stash I haven't gotten around to using, so I'm passing them along to you to do your magic on. Excited to see what you come up with. Hugs friend, love Shannon. Got some tissue paper. Okay. First item is a Dollar Tree dome. Okay. I think I can work with that. This is actually, do I have to DIY with this? Because this could be really useful in my new office. Hmm, okay. Next item is, oh, this is super cute. Okay, it's just a little set of drawers. They have little silver knobs on them. Again, a Dollar Tree item. Hmm. What is this? Is this from the Dollar Tree, Shannon? Really? Yeah, it's a Greenbrier product. I have never, ever, have I ever seen this in my Dollar Tree. Huh. That's pretty cute. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> the thoughts are already swirling. Oh, this is really nice. A four by four frame love that so Courtney's instructions were to send five to eight items Ooh, oh little wooden truck I don't think I've seen this either more okay I don't have these how does she have all of these items I don't have these wood cubes they're cool. I need like a hundred of them. And a metal hanging corrugated piece. So that's really exciting. These are all my items. Very nice items to work with, I must say. And now I'm gonna open 
the package of the two challenge items for Megan. Here it is. So this arrived late last night and then I got Shannon's box today and I was feeling it and I was like, oh, this has gotta be a bowl and a pair of socks. So I did cut it open. I think I need this right now because I might have, um, yeah. Ooh, baby. Not at all what I thought. I thought it was going to be socks. It's a diaper. All right. This is not what I thought either. All right, so we've got some coconuts and we could put a whole outfit together, but that might not work here on YouTube. So we've got uh, the bikini top and the coconuts. These are the challenge items. Thanks, Megan. <laughs> All right, so now I've got some thinking to do, and then we'll get right in to our DIYs. So ready or not, we are jumping in with both coconuts, and we are getting started on our first DIY. Now we will use the other coconut in our last DIY, so be sure to stay tuned to see how I use that. So as part of this DIY, we have to use the coconut and the diaper together with at least one of our other items from our box. So I started thinking, and I started hacking away at this diaper. Really, I had no plan, no rhyme, no reason, just kind of deconstructing it to see what I had to work with. So once I got it looking kind of like a um, feminine hygiene product, I decided to go ahead and separate the layers. It is such a mess. There's all those absorbent materials in the middle. But what you want to end with is something that looks like this. So basically what it is, is a long strip of the outer portion of the diaper. And then I'm going to use some Mod Podge to adhere it to the coconut. I did decide to go ahead and cut it in half so that I had two pieces of the diaper to fully cover the coconut. I did use my scissors to just trim off any of the excess elastic from the little band on it and I realized quickly I was going to need a lot more Mod Podge than I had planned on so I just started spilling it all over the place pouring it into every little crack and crevice because that diaper sure is absorbent. So if you decide to attempt this, please be sure to send me a picture. I'll have all my information down below. Contact me on Instagram. I'd love to see what it turned out looking like and I'd love to know what you would have done with a coconut and a diaper. So I figured out slowly but surely that moisture was key. You're gonna want it to be nice and wet and then you're just gonna use your hand and keep rubbing it until you get it to stay down. Once I had one side completely adhered, I'm gonna go ahead and use the other half, getting it nice and wet with the Mod Podge, both on top and on bottom. And I also realized that there are gonna be some creases, so you can just go ahead and fold those down. I actually kind of made little pleats and that's going to make sense here in a minute but as I was smoothing it down getting it to stay in place and cooperate I realized I just had too much to work with so the pleats really helped to sort of take out the excess and make it lay down nice and flat so once you have your Mod Podge and your diaper on your coconut set it out to dry now with it being so hot it was nice and hard really quick you could also leave it out overnight but make sure it is nice and dry before you start painting for this i'm using three different reds what we are making is an apple. So I have studied a few apples and realized there's so many different shades of red within an apple. It's not just gonna be one color, so feel free to take liberty and use whatever you have on hand. You might wanna add some darker colors, some lighter colors. Now being that this is just such a round object, I'm trying to make an illusion 
of depth and then things got out of hand and it kind of turned into a watermelon at one point it was a tomato it kind of also looked like a pumpkin at one point so the point is play with your paint until you're happy with what it looks like i took some brown paint and i tried to create a shadow of what an apple would look like at the top i also did this along the bottom now let's move on to the item that we are including in this diy from my mystery box and that is this corrugated metal piece that i am painting black i'm going to set that out to dry here is what my apple is looking like a full 24 hours after drying i did decide i wanted my apple to be nice and shiny so i pulled out my gloss mod podge i gave it a good coating and again set it out to dry now i'm taking a canvas that I had on hand from the Dollar Tree and I'm taking some beige and white paint what we're gonna do is create the under layer of a wood grain I'm just getting those colors mixed nice together as I go up and down my canvas just mixing them as I go with my brush strokes up and down now we're gonna do something really fun now this looks great as is and you could just go with it like this but I have a tool I wanted to use so I brought out my dark brown paint I gave it a nice thick layer and now I'm using a wood wood grainer I've had this for years you can adjust the handle for different wood grains you just kind of wiggle your hand up and down as you slide across the canvas now I'll tell you it is very forgiving I was scared to death my first time using this I actually did an entire wall with a wood grainer and if you don't like what you get the first time just go in for a second time you can change the direction that you're going just wipe your grainer off in between make sure it's nice and dry so that it's not dragging too much of the paint I think it is a really cool tool and I'm happy with how it turned out then I took my dried apple and added lots of hot glue to the back of my coconut and having the extra pieces of diaper there was actually very helpful in adhering it to my metal piece now I'm taking my finished dried canvas and I'm going to be adding this piece on top but first I'm taking out some pet bedding I love to use this in my DIYs you get a very large container especially if you're just crafting with it it will last a lifetime for about four dollars I am just adding that faux hay to the bottom and now I'm gonna add more hot glue to the back of my metal sign before adhering it to my canvas I also decided my apple needed a little stem so I took out a small wood dowel from my craft stash painted it brown cut it down to size and hot glued it in place I also took out some of my faux floral and decided to use a few of the leaves to add a finishing touch to my apple now I pulled out my Cricut and I decided to design something fun for the canvas so I came up with auntie's apple farm and I went ahead and adhered that to the top now I'm not a pro at the Cricut by any means I'm still figuring out the sizing of things I really should have probably gone a little bit bigger but I think it turned out adorable here's what I came up with from a coconut and a diaper I think it looks like an apple my husband says maybe a peach what do you think this looks like did I pull it off comment down below and let me know now it's time to get into our second DIY so with my apple I'm thinking we need to stay with a fall theme at least a late summer early fall theme so I'm taking apart this little organizer I'm pulling the drawers out of that little chest and now I'm going to use some popsicle sticks to cover it and I wasn't quite sure how tall I wanted them along the top I do want to create sort of a scalloped edge so I went ahead and just clipped it off exactly where I wanted it and used that as a measuring tool for all the rest of the popsicle sticks and cutting them down with my scissors then I'm going to go ahead and add them one at a time to my little chest using my hot glue gun and I used a total of 20 of my popsicle sticks now let's move on to the base of the organizer now it actually has both of these black pieces I'm going to use my glue gun and glue those together I think you can probably tell where I'm going at this point you are going to need two wooden dowels these are from the Dollar Tree they come in a multi-pack I'm just using some hot glue to adhere one side then I decided to take the little knobs off of that chest and 
actually just use the screws. I think it just makes it look really authentic. And I just used a little bit of hot glue to put them in each hole on either side. Now I am using a few slivers left over from my popsicle stick scraps and just making sort of a little riser. I hot glued them together and now I'm gonna glue them in place because this side had some ridges and that means that the dowel was not gonna sit flush. So I'm just using this so that the pieces fit together more seamlessly, adding some hot glue on top and then adding my dowel, letting that dry. Now we're gonna take our little wheel and we're gonna take the little chest that we covered in the popsicle sticks and we're going to glue them together using some more hot glue. And I'm sure that you can figure out by now, we have made a little wheelbarrow or at least the beginnings of one. Next, I'm gonna take more of my popsicle sticks. I'm actually gonna glue two small pieces together and I'm gonna do that actually four times. That's gonna add little back legs to our wheelbarrow and you're gonna need two sets for either side. So I did one back end and then went on to the other side before moving on to our handles. So I was not quite sure how to get to the handle part of this. I just cut some wooden dowels and added them. I also decided to stain this with some watered down paint and I was not happy with how it looked. So all in all, I actually ended up painting it, which you'll see here in a second. Now I'm using another one of those little drawers, cutting off the sides, and this is going to make a flat surface on the top of our wheelbarrow for adding some decorative pieces. So I added some hot glue, popped that right into place, and now we have a really cute little wheelbarrow. And I would love to hear what ideas you had for using that little organizer. We have five more DIYs, but these two were the most complicated. So let's move on to our next one, which is so simple. I'm taking this glass frame from the Dollar Tree, removing the backing, and I actually decided to measure it. I'm glad I did because I went onto Canva and I created a fun little printable that I will try to have linked for you guys down below. And it was actually much larger than what I thought I would need. So it ended up being a five inch by five inch item. And so I went ahead and just printed that from Walmart, added it right into my frame. And I think it is so cute. I'm so happy with how this turned out. It's my first little attempt at doing anything like this. And printing it out at the photo section in Walmart was super easy and affordable. Now we're going on to our next DIY. And for this, we're gonna need more of that red paint. We're taking that wooden cube and we are going to paint all but one of the sides with some red paint. Now we are gonna go back in for some detail and dimension because you guessed it we are creating a little apple so i did go ahead and add some more colors to my red cube taking the darker colors adding them around the edges for some shadows and going in with some lighter colors in the center not just white but some really bright red and just playing with it until i was happy with it and then i decided to go in on that one unfinished side and try and make it look like a sliced apple. Um, it looked like something, but it was not a sliced apple. So I let it dry, I sanded it off, and let's start over. And that is the beauty of DIYing, especially when it comes to working with wood so easy to work with so i just went ahead and did a little investigating to see what the inside of an apple looks like and went from there i also took this little knob or drawer pool i like to take these off of things before i trash them if they are no longer usable and add them to my craft stash i hot glued that onto top and then i added the inside of the apple just to make it look a little cleaner i did use some beige and white paint just playing around with some shadows and going in with some white paint and i think it ended up looking very realistic took a while but be patient if you attempt this one also be sure to add a little bit of brown down the center to separate them and then take some black paint to add some little apple seeds on either side. The last step of course was just adding some brown paint to that knob on top. And I think it is a really fun piece of decor 
perfect size and scale for any kind of tiered tray. Now on to our next DIY. For this one, we're taking out more paint, this time in black, and painting that wooden truck on all sides and in all the little nooks and crannies. Now we're gonna take one of the drawers left over from our little cardboard chest, and we're gonna also cut that in half. So the idea here is we're going to create a truck bed with this, and if we have it in two pieces, then we can cut it down and sort of personalize it, make sure that it is the right size for the back of that truck. So take the two pieces, you can sort of shimmy them together, and then you can, once you dry fit them into the bed of the truck to make sure they're the right size, hot glue them together and paint them. I decided to go in with some brown paint to make it look sort of farmhouse and very rustic. Now I'm taking some white beads that I have on hand in my craft stash. I'm using a two toothpick and I'm painting them red. Now I'm taking more toothpicks and I'm painting those brown. I'm going to take one and stick it in some hot glue and then insert it in the top of the bead. Sort of looks like a cherry, but I promise it'll end up looking like an apple. I did add a, another popsicle stick along the top to create a riser and added some more of that pet bedding on top with some hot glue before hot gluing all my miniature apples into the bed of the truck. This one was so fun. There's something so gratifying about just creating something so small and miniature. I just think this turned out adorable. That's all there is to this one. I kept it really simple, perfect for tear trays, and great for fall. I love the apples, but you could always go orange and make them into pumpkins. And now on to our next DIY. This one's going to be a quick one. I'm taking the barn and painting it black. Now, this one did kind of give me some chest pain. I have not painted on top of paper and cardstock like that for a while and have definitely never used my Cricut with it. So after I finished painting my barn and adding a brown roof, I got on my Cricut and created an image for the front of the barn that says hot cider with the little mug. I already used the Auntie's Farm and then I um, got a little excited. I rubbed it way too hard. And here's what it sounded like when I realized. My heart skipped a beat. Oh, I was devastated. So I thought, well, I'm just going to rub it and the paint will go back on. That didn't work. So I figured I'd pull it from another angle. Yeah, that didn't work either. And this is what ended up happening. But... It all worked out. I was glad that the vinyl stayed in place and then I just went in with some more paint. I thought for sure I would not be able to salvage this. I thought it was gonna be, instead of hot cider, a hot mess, but it actually looks really good. I don't think you can tell unless you look super close that it even peeled up. So that's my idea for the barn. I think it is perfect for fall. I cannot wait for fall weather. What about you? On to our last DIY. We are using our other coconut and we are removing the string. And now we're taking our cloche, removing the bottom, adding a generous amount of hot glue as I usually do, turning that upside down on to the coconut. And now we're going to paint it one of my favorite colors, which is black. Now I'm gonna take some floral wire and this is a heavy gauge. I'm gonna cut off a piece for a handle because we are creating a little basket. Now I'm taking some twine. I added just a little bit of hot glue to anchor it and I'm just winding around that wire, adding glue here and there just for a little more stability. And once you've got your wire completely covered, take one end, stick it in one hole of the coconut, then do that on the opposite side as well, just bending it into place. And now we have a fun little basket. For this one, I just added a napkin and some apples into it. I think it is so cute. I am so happy with how it turned out. It was sort of a last minute idea. I'm glad I did it. 
and I'm really happy with all of my DIYs. Now I am excited for fall and I'm one of those crazy people already thinking up things. So be sure that you subscribe if you wanna see more DIYs like these on my channel. I will have a playlist with all of these fun, yummy treats you see displayed because these are all past DIYs been doing this for years and I welcome you aboard if you're new to my channel. I would love to know what your favorite DIY out of these tiered tray fall inspired apple DIYs is. For me it's got to be the framed apple pie recipe. Be sure to comment down below and let me know yours. So this was a challenge with like capital ch. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I came up with. I'm super excited to see what everyone else is doing and I think using the same challenge items is genius. Great job, Courtney, and thank you, Megan, for sending those out. Of course, thanks to Shannon for sending me my box and I can't wait to see what Jamie made with everything I sent him. So be sure that you follow the playlist so you can see what we all sent each other and what we all came up with and that way you'll get to see a wide variety of the use of bra coconuts and diapers. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this mystery box challenge. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you back very soon. Mm -hmm.